Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a budget-friendly air quality monitor called the Must Tool M29, which alleges to have 15 sensors in one device. In this video, we'll look at the physical device, the reported features, then we'll set up the device, link it through into Home Assistant, and then test the accuracy of the sensors against some of the leading air quality sensors on the market. Then I'll give you my conclusion as to whom this device is targeted at, and if you should skip it, consider it, or buy it. Your time is valuable, so let's jump on in. As this is a budget-friendly device, you're going to get the basics, but enough to get you up and running. You get the device itself, which is a black plastic case measuring 90mm tall by 70mm wide and 30mm deep and comes with a large 70mm colourful display on the front that provides excellent contrast with deep blacks and vibrant colours. Off axis to the left and to the right are also excellent, however when viewed from above or from below, the colours can look a little washed out and the contrast drops dramatically. There is large venting for the sensors to the left and to the right with three small holes on the top and even more ventilation on the back all of which is excellent as you need good airflow for the air sensors to work correctly. To the right is also a red multifunction button that can be used from anything from setting up the device to starting a stopwatch, which is an interesting choice, more on that later. And below this is a USB socket that is used for charging the 2000 milliamp lithium battery at 5 volts DC. To the rear is more ventilation and two keyhole mounting holes so you can wall mount if needed. Also included is a separate desk mounting. This is of the generic variety and probably for a mobile phone, more than an air quality monitor. But it does the job and gives you good flexibility for most angles. The manual tells you what you need to get up and running, but don't expect a quality document with mismatched typefaces and broken English, but it gets the job done. And finally, you get a 40 centimeter USB-A to USB-C power cable to charge the internal battery. Long enough to charge, but not long enough for a permanent power mount. The Must Tool reports to have some great features for such a budget-friendly device. It's reported to have 15 sensors in this one device. These are for carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, Total Volatile Organic Compound, or TVOC as it's known, which is a good indicator for air quality, formaldehyde, or HCHO, which I thought was used for embalming, but apparently is also present in low concentrations in plywood and particle board, and can be an irritant on your eyes and throat. You also get a sensor for various different sizes of particles, from 1, 2.5, and 10 micrometers. There is an AQI reading for air quality index, which is a standardized way to measure and communicate how polluted the air is in a specific area. Turning complex data like particle size counts, carbon monoxide and other pollutant levels into a simple number used on a scale from 1 to 500. And rounding off with measurements for temperature and humidity. Now that's a lot of information that many much more expensive sensors would be proud to report on. Unfortunately, MustTool do not publish a data sheet or specifications about the device. As such, I cannot tell you what sensors are used. However, they do tell you the accuracy of the measurements. We'll see if these are accurate later in the video. Firstly, it is highly recommended that when you turn on the device for the first time, by pressing the red button on the side of the unit, that you leave it on charge for 24 hours. This not only allows the battery to fully charge, which normally takes between 3 to 4 hours, but also allows the sensor to acclimatize. On the point of the battery, it will last between 4 and 6 hours, which is not the best standby time, and is partially due to the fact that these sensors, especially those full of volatile organic compound, need to heat up an element that takes power. So maybe a bigger battery would have been a good idea. Also, when turning on for the first time, it is suggested to verify that the device is working by breathing on the side of the unit. This will cause the CO2 and other readings to skyrocket. If this happens, then you are good to proceed as everything seems to be working. The device is a Toya device, and I'm going to be setting it up in the Toya app and then integrating through the cloud. But you can always integrate locally if you wish. Assuming that your device is turned on, 
open the Toy app close to the device. The device should auto detect and you should be asked if you wish to add it. Press the add button now. The pairing process will start. This can take some time, so be patient. When asked, select your Wi-Fi and enter your Wi-Fi password. The pairing process will now continue. Optionally change the name and give it a room location by pressing the pencil to the right. Then press done. Now I'm going to be integrating through the Toyo Cloud. I won't get into the whole debate of local versus cloud-based integrations, especially for Toya. But if you have a strong opinion on this, then let us know in the Discord, link in the description. Open Home Assistant. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services. Search for and select the Toya integration. Press the three dots to the right. Select Reload. You'll see your device count increase. Now press OK. Now to verify that your MT29 has been integrated, press the Devices. Search for and select the MT29 and you should see all your integrated entities. The app is basic as this is a Toya app, as it tries to meet the requirements of potentially multiple different air quality sensors. The top section shows a graphic relating to the air quality index. It's clear and bold and to the point. Under this, you get four particular matter measurements from 0.3 to 10 micrometers. Then you get the tiles for each of the sensors. None of these tiles are actionable and pressing these doesn't result in a drill down into a graph or likewise. However, these figures seem to be updated every two to three seconds, which is an excellent refresh rate. At the bottom of the screen, there are three tiles for records, time and set. Records are graphs for each of the sensor values. No mention is made of how long the history records are for. However, if you have InfluxDB and Grafana loaded into Home Assistant, you can record the data points virtually forever and graph these into a Home Assistant dashboard. Check out that video in the pop-up above. Next is time. Here you can set a timer for up to 599 minutes, plus set and activate three different alarms. And finally set. Here you can configure the temperature units and turn on alarms based for different values for carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and the 2.5 millimeter particles, as well as for formaldehyde measurements. This is the place where you can set the sleep time for the display when on battery, which defaults to 10 minutes and stays on permanently when plugged in. One final point is that the app seems slow to respond on occasions. I'm not sure if this is a Toya or device issue, but if this happens to you, simply close and reopen the app and everything comes back to normal. Now I'm going to be doing comparison testing as opposed to lab testing against calibrated scientific machines. For the test, I'll be putting up the MT29 up against the Apollo Air 1, check out that review in the pop-up above, and the Air Gradient 1, likewise, check out that review in the pop-up above. The unit has been co-located overnight to acclimatize, and none of the devices have been calibrated, so the readings are straight out of the box. As such, in theory, all of these could improve their accuracy. I've placed all the available entities for all three centers on a dashboard. Now, first off, you're going to notice that there are only seven sensors brought across by the MT29 of the potential 15, which is a little disappointing, but maybe the others will come across later on. As you can see, the air gradient and the Apollo extend off the screen. This is the advantage of an ESB home or bespoke integration with a lot more flexibility. The temperatures range over 0.4 degrees with the MT29 coming in at the lowest, which is within specification. The humidity measurements are within 6%, with the MT29 and the air gradient coming in with the highest and the Apollo as the lowest. Humidity is traditionally a very difficult measurement to determine, especially on small devices. Now I won't comment on the air quality index, as this is not consistently reported across all three devices, but their relative measurements of air quality measurements seem to be aligned. Carbon dioxide is reported on all three devices as parts per million. They range from 520 parts per million on the MT29 to 607 parts per million on the Apollo. Based on the sensors used, I've inclined to believe the air gradient, especially as it's the mid-ground, but still an amazing job by the MT29 for such a budget-friendly device. Particulate matter by size is where the MT29 seems to come undone. 
focusing on the PM10 figure that ranges from 2.8 and 3 micrograms on the Apollo and Air Gradient respectively, and 19 micrograms on the BMT29. This discrepancy is also mirrored on the other particulate matter measurements. As the Apollo and the Air Gradient align so closely, I'm inclined to believe these devices. And finally, there is a formaldehyde measurement. Neither of the other devices report on this, so guess we'll just have to accept this reading. So the must-tool MT29 air quality device, what do I think? Well, firstly, let's talk about the cost. The Air Gradient Air 1 is the most expensive, but it does have the most sensors and seemingly the most accurate sensors. Ready built is $195 American, although you can get it for $138 if you want to do a 5 minute DIY build. Links in the description. The Apollo Air 1 comes in various different options with the base at $89.99 US, then add CO2 brings to $108.99 US, although the top of the line as demonstrated for $148.99 US, which is still $45 cheaper than the Air Gradient. Links in the description. Now the MT29 comes in at $23.99 US and that's with free shipping. So this is extremely cost effective. The accuracy of the temperature and humidity is very good. The air quality index, although not aligned with the other devices, seems accurate. The carbon dioxide measurement also seems to be accurate. So it should be able to tell you when to open that window to avoid those drowsy afternoons. The particulate matter measurement seems to be high. Hopefully a firmware fix for this will come out. But in the meantime, the readings can be used as relative, but don't treat as absolute. So who should buy this device? If you want to report on air quality in your home and are on a budget, then this is the device for you. Once you get an idea of what is possible, then you can move up the price ladder. As in this device category, you get what you pay for. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then hit that like button, comment and share. And if you'd like to have access to similar material, then subscribe or maybe become a channel member and get early access to material plus other perks. And if you want to join other like-minded people, then why not join the Discord channel where smart home enthusiasts meet to solve each other's problems. And if I've helped you make a purchasing decision, then maybe a super thanks or PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.